I'll be talking today about the stochastic geometry of John Shearer, uh, somewhat in the tradition of Martin Gardner. I'm going to be talking about somebody else's work uh, in the way that Martin Gardner wrote about other people's uh, work, such as uh, John Conway, Roger Penrose, and, and so on and so forth. Um, this is being presented uh, here at the gathering for Gardner 11. This is something that John prepared uh, for, for this meeting. Um, he has a, a website called John Art, uh, and this is representative of the type of, of playful thing that he does. Uh, first things first, though, I, I think it is probably appropriate time to thank the organizers for doing just a marvelous, marvelous, marvelous job. Um, also, I've programmed in some, some natural stopping points throughout the talk uh, before the, hopefully the red light comes on. Uh, we'll see this periodically, uh, and, and that will end things as, as appropriate. But for the moment, at least, I'll, I'll keep going. Mostly, I want to run through a lot of pictures that, that John has generated. Uh, we'll start with this, just a bunch of circles. Here's some triangles. Uh, here's some rhombi, rhombi uh, some more rhombi, kind of the same, same thing. A bunch of rectangles, uh, black and white in different orientations. Some squares, black and white in, in diagonal orientations. A whole bunch of squares. Uh, and even more squares, as you can, as you can sort of see. Here are some uh, ellipses that sort of look like, uh, well, if they'd done this in red and white, it would look like you know, red and white blood cells, or these look like evil bacteria. Uh, this is just a little blow up from that, that picture. Um, thank you, <laughs> but it's still green, so we can get rid of that. <laughs> um, why stop at the plane? Uh, Shearer has done some work with Paul Bork in uh, Australia. His website is also available. Um, they've packed. Uh, the nice thing about going into three dimensions is you can get interlocking shapes. So they've done some donuts. They've been doing a lot with um, sort of uh, uh, picture frames or rectangular frames that they start out um, oriented in the three axes. Here's just a little detail of, of this. Well, you know, two-dimensional stuff can be printed. If you 3D print it, um, will come. You got what they call, or I call at least, the explosion at the window factory. <laughs> this is a small object that I believe started in nice, you know, plain, but as soon as it was uh, printed, it just sort of fell apart. Thank you. Oh, still green. Um, right. What's going on here? Okay. Well, what's going on is we're taking a decreasing sequence of, of areas that have a finite sum, okay? And we're gonna try to fill a canvas of area A with randomly placed shapes of these decreasing areas, okay? The key rule is you don't allow overlaps, right? So let's start with the canvas of area A. Still green, thank you. Get rid of that. Let's just throw down a big shape, throw down another shape. The third shape gets in there, the fourth shape. You know, we, we keep finding uh, things go on. And it, we're not going to fill up six minutes doing this. Um, the question is, can't you get jammed and have an arrangement where there's no, nowhere for the next size piece to, to go? Well, the answer is yes. In fact, if you consider just you know, sort of the, 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 the simplest uh, uh, you know, summable sequence, um, you know, start with a square with sides of length one. You bring in your first square of area half, which has sides of length about 0.7, or 707, as somebody said earlier. And now you bring in your next shape, and you, know, you just try moving it around, moving it around, moving it around, and it just doesn't fit. And so the, the real question here is can you ever not get jammed at some point? And there is no theory at this point saying if or when the process can ever go on forever to fill the canvas. The only theory, at least that I'm aware of, is for a one-dimensional case, which is pretty uninteresting visually. Okay. But 
Shears finds some sequences that seem to work. And the ones he uses are pretty much basically on the Riemann zeta function, okay, where C is chosen to have total area one, N is chosen for artistic reasons, the key parameter turns out to be K, which he allows to vary to get different artistic effects. So he explores ranges that have no, seem to have no jamming. He gets runtime effects with varying K and N. He gets artistic effects by varying the size of the biggest piece. And he uses different things with color coding. And I'll keep going for just the moment because I think we can just look at some pictures. This is just a grid of pictures with exploring the uh, parameter range in N and, and K. Here's a particularly nice one. The shape actually is the blue thing that's shrinking, although it looks like the object is, is the yellow. Some patriotic pictures, big fish eat little fish, some smiles or kisses. I actually call this Dami Baz Yamila from Katala. It's give me a thousand kisses. John likes to be sinful and fills things with numbers and does some other nice things. And I will thank you very much.